Caregiving can sometimes feel like an impossible struggle. Caregivers may be torn between taking care of loved ones and trying to maintain balance in life. The good news is that it doesn't have to be that way. The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson is here to focus on the conversation of caring. You're not alone. In fact, you're in exactly the right place to share stories and learn tips and resources to help you and your loved ones. So now, please welcome the host of The Caring Generation, Pamela D. Wilson. This is Pamela D. Wilson, caregiving expert, speaker, consultant, and guardian of the Caring Generation. Thank you for joining me for this week's show. This is episode 204 of year six of the Caring Generation podcast. This year's format is Take 15, actionable tips and helpful insights in about 15 minutes or thereabout. This week, the topic is caregiver abuse of the elderly. How well-intentioned family caregivers, or friends can be accused of elder exploitation, undue influence, elder abuse, and elder neglect by Adult Protective Services, the police, and the court system. If you find this podcast helpful, please do like it and follow it on your favorite podcast app. Your participation through likes and follows helps the show reach more people worldwide looking for hope, help, and support. And if you have a question or an idea for a future program, go to my website, PamelaDWilson.com, click on the Contact Me button and complete the form. If you want to learn more about me and how I help individuals, caregivers, and people managing their health, Go to my website, PamelaDWilson.com, and click on the Services tab. Many caregivers, whether family or friends, want to be helpful. But when can being helpful or overly helpful be viewed by others as interfering, being over-controlling, or getting too involved in personal business, like making healthcare decisions, paying bills, or legal matters. In over 20 years of serving the elderly and their caregivers, I've been involved with the police and adult protective services many times. As a care manager and a professional fiduciary, I was and I am a mandatory reporter of elder abuse. If based on my years of experience and knowledge, I thought or I witnessed an elderly person to be a victim of abuse, neglect, or exploitation, or if they were neglecting their own care, I had a responsibility to make a factual report to the police and adult protective services. I know many family caregivers who hear the words police or adult protective services or the court system and they get worried. If you're not doing anything bad, you have no reason to worry. The problem is bad is relative. Family and friend caregivers often ask me, how does adult protective services get involved and show up at my friend's house or my parents' house asking all these questions? The simple answer is that someone was concerned about elder abuse enough to make a report. When people call me and they express concerns about a neighbor or a friend, my advice is always to err on the side of caution because I have had positive relationships with the police and Adult Protective Services and the court system. Make a report. If abuse is happening, it might be able to be identified. If nothing's going on, then maybe that's even better. I've seen the best and the worst. I've seen Adult Protective Service workers who care very much, I've seen adult protective service workers who are too busy and their departments are underfinanced. And while they'd like to do something, they can't and they don't. I've seen people from churches who adopt an elderly person living alone and then steal their money and go so far as to have themselves written into this person's will. I've seen paid caregivers from in-home care agencies taking over the responsibilities of sons or daughters who live far away. Then all of a sudden, their name is on the title of the car, on the bank account, or on the house. Not to scare you, 
but all it takes is access to an older adult and a little influence in how an older adult makes decisions to become a suspect of elder abuse and exploitation. Let me give you a couple of very simple examples in the context of mandatory reporters. Physicians and healthcare providers are mandatory reporters. How often does a caregiver go with an older adult or an elderly parent to a doctor's appointment and do all of the talking? If you're not the medical power of attorney, you can get into trouble if you appear to be controlling the conversation. And even if you are the medical power of attorney agent or the guardian, you should know not to control the conversation. Let your parent or loved one speak directly to the doctor. If you want to share information, ask permission. The actions of agents under power of attorney, family and professional guardians and conservators can be under as much suspicion and questioning as a family caregiver or friend who seems to be over controlling. Medical and health professionals like 911 who may show up at your parents' home for a lift assist because they've fallen, or who take them to the emergency room, the doctors and the nurses at the hospital, they are all mandatory elder abuse reporters. The next group of mandatory reporters work in the financial industry, at banks, credit unions, financial planning firms. So let's say you're a caregiver who takes an older friend to the bank, or a child who takes an elderly parent to the bank. Let your friend or parent go up to the teller window and do their business. Don't go with them unless you absolutely have to, unless you are the agent under power of attorney. Otherwise, you might be suspected of influencing this person to withdraw money from a bank account or complete other transactions. Along these lines, if an older person shows up at the bank and makes large withdrawals or is making out big checks to charities or companies, that banker can make a report to Adult Protective Services and the police if these actions seem out of character. It's true that older adults with memory loss have more significant problems managing and keeping track of their money and their bills. Financial and wealth planners are another category of mandatory reporters. While these individuals really don't like to report, if they see suspicious transactions, know about friend or family member involvement in financial transactions, or all of a sudden see large withdrawals or checks or their client no longer making good decisions about money, they have a duty to report. Then let's talk about family and friend caregivers of older adults who may not have the cognitive ability, so they may have memory loss, dementia, Alzheimer's, even in the early stages, to care for themselves, but these people are still living at home. Many of these individuals would not be safe in their homes without the help of these individuals. So that alone presents an opportunity for potential abuse, because that person needs your help. Sometimes friends or family members move into the home to be a part-time or full-time caregiver. When this happens, the suspicion bell can go off. Who is this person? Why are they moving in? And what benefit will they receive in return for their time? Adult children who move in with elderly parents or elderly parents who move in with adult children can easily become situations of abuse when one party becomes dependent on the other, or both parties depend on each other. Adult children who give up their jobs, I never recommend this by the way, to become full-time caregivers all of a sudden rely on living in a parent's home rent-free. They pay no bills. They live off the parent's income. I've seen friends who moved in under similar circumstances. It's best to think about these situations as legal contractual actions. Then, let's add to this, are there any discussions about changing legal documents like wills or estate plans to make that caregiver a beneficiary? That is another red flag. 
So questions to ask. What is the caregiver providing and receiving for their time? Does the caregiver have any caregiving skills or healthcare knowledge? What is the older adult receiving and paying on behalf of the caregiver? Because caregiving is personal, family members and friends don't like to view care relationships as contractual. However, the minute you begin to trade your time to care for another person, there are expectations on both sides that are rarely, if ever, discussed or put on paper and notarized. Then there are issues with medical care and related decisions. If you are involved with helping to manage medications and attend doctor appointments and make medical decisions, and if the person you care for is asking your opinion, you had better be sure that if you are giving advice, your advice is based on facts, research, discussions with doctors or experts. Because if you give bad advice or something happens, you can be held responsible. Someone else can blame you. It's no different than if you place an elderly parent in an unsafe situation or know about an unsafe situation. You know this older person has memory loss, yet you leave them at home alone when you know they may walk out the front door and get lost, get behind the wheel of the car, drive, kill someone, start a kitchen fire, a flood in the bathroom, forget to take their medications, forget to eat, drown in the bathtub, have a serious fall, and not be able to call anyone for health. Your knowledge of the risk makes you a contributor to any harm that befalls the person you care for. I know caregivers want to be helpful and optimistic about the care of the loved one. That's all good. I prefer to be that way too. But everyone in a care situation must be practical and realistic and reasonable and thorough to have plans and backup plans and strategies in place. While it can be hard to know what you're planning for if you don't have the experience, find someone who has the experience. If you are the power of attorney or the guardian in any of these situations and family members are interfering, or manipulating your elderly parents, or one of your parents is neglecting the care of the other parent, you also have a duty to do something and not ignore a potentially harmful situation. These are the topics that friend and family caregivers don't want to talk about. Elder abuse, neglect, exploitation, financial, physical, or verbal abuse. Caregivers think that their actions are reasonable because they lack the experience to know otherwise. They rarely consider how actions they think are okay might be seen as questionable or exploitation by other people. Then family caregivers often ask me, well, how do I get rid of adult protective services? My advice is to do your best to understand their concerns and see if they can be resolved or proven factually incorrect. Just because your aging parents doesn't want APS involved doesn't mean they're going to go away, especially if there is suspicion of an elderly person's safety, vulnerability, or inability to care for themselves, even with an involved caregiver. If you're living with a parent and you speak for them all the time, if your parent never gets to express what they want or speak for themselves to anyone, you can be viewed as an over-controlling caregiver. You can also be viewed as someone who is not giving them access to other people. You are purposely isolating them. Even though you may think you are protecting a parent or a friend, your actions may be going well beyond what a normal and reasonable person would do. This raises the question of why are you doing this? What do you personally have to gain? Do you need to continue living with this person because you financially benefit or is there equal give and take, equal return? If you neglect their health care, does this mean that they will die sooner and you will inherit money from their estate if you're in their will? If you're a good caregiver under suspicion, you must start looking at the situation from the other side, especially if you have done nothing wrong. Don't be naive. 
if you have anything suspicious in your background, bankruptcies, an ability to manage money, being evicted from a living situation, fired from a job, speeding tickets, drunk driving, any of these things can make you more suspicious. And while many family members don't want to get into legal battles over caregiving with siblings or parents, sometimes it is necessary if there is neglect of care or financial abuse going on. If you are a good caregiver, you may be intimidated by adult protective services and the police and the court systems. If your intentions are good and you have done nothing wrong, take a close look at why you are being questioned. Look at your behaviors. See if you've done anything that might be construed as potentially abusive or seen as exploitation. If so, think about these actions. Think about putting guardrails in place so that you do not continue to do these things and be accused of bad intentions because you may be unintentionally harming the situation. You may be removed from caring for this person who really needs you because you don't think about what you're doing and the consequences of what you're doing. Caregiving goes both ways. Many times friend and family members go beyond normal boundaries to provide care and this is where intentions and actions can be questioned. This is where exhausted caregivers can make mistakes that unintentionally harm a loved one in any area. If you don't have the skills, the knowledge, the background to know what you're doing or to see the consequences, find someone who does so that you cannot unintentionally be accused of exploitation, undue influence, abuse, or neglect. If you are a family caregiver seeing bad things happening, do make a report to the police and adult protective services. Figure out how to move forward if they can't help you. In either case, no one wants a vulnerable, older adult to be harmed. So if you're a good caregiver who's gotten in over your head or you're witnessing potential abuse, again, get support, get help, get education, do something before this situation goes beyond the point of no return. I thank you all for being here. Please like and follow this podcast. Share it with others you know who are seeking hope, help, and support. I'm Pamela D. Wilson, a caregiving expert, advocate, and speaker. If you want to learn more about me and how I help individuals, caregivers, and persons managing their health, go to my website, PamelaDWilson.com. Click on the Services tab or complete my contact form. I look forward to being with you all again soon. God bless you all. Sleep well tonight. Have a fabulous day tomorrow. And enjoy each day until we are here together again. Tune in each week for The Caring Generation with host Pamela D. Wilson. Come join the conversation and see how Pamela can provide solutions and peace of mind for everyone. Here on Pamela D. Wilson's The Caring Generation.